Now we've heard about knowledge age investments in intangibles like R&D versus hard assets like factories, but besides a handsomely bound business plan and an expensive necktie, how should a business requiring additional funding approach the capital market? We'll hear from some who've been through it from both sides of the table in this segment called Venture Capital for Intellectual Capital. <laughs> I mean, I think the first thing they need to think about is understanding whether they're at a stage at which an institutional venture investor, for example, would be like, like Rivervest, would be interested. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that really requires some market research. Now, they'll have, you know, they can, you know, they can talk directly to VCs and get an idea of at what stage do you invest, but it's probably more efficient to do it through, you know, others like attorneys, accountants, other advisors that they might have, or, or frankly other companies that have raised capital, say, you know, give me an idea of where I need to be in developing my technology before I'm, I'm going to garner interest from the venture capital community. So that's sort of the, the first step. I mean, are you at a stage where they're going to be interested or will you be wasting your time to try to access that capital? The, the, the second point is really understanding what value enhancing milestones you, you can achieve that will really create an inflection point in, in the value of the company. It's typically things that can be done over a one to two year period, uh, roughly, and then determining how much capital it's going to take to do that and, and making that determination at a level where you understand in a very detailed fashion this is what it's going to take in terms of people other assets, uh, outside services, and so forth, so that there's a, you know, a, a very well-defined budget um, and, and laying that out. And then something that's often forgot in thinking, uh, forgotten in thinking about that is um, allowing enough time to raise the next round of capital. So if you just raise enough to achieve your milestones, and let's say you're so good that you actually do it on your budgeted dollars, but you haven't allowed any runway to raise the next financing, that's a problem because it typically takes at least, I would say generally companies should allow at least six months to raise that next round of funding. So you really have to finance that runway as well and probably leave a little cushion in there in case you stub your toe and something takes a, a little longer than you thought. In my case, I believe in bringing people together uh, really smart people, paying them very well, I compensate them well, and, um, and having them help me do, do just that, to build the story and to build the business plan. So you really, you really pretty much need a business plan when you go out to sell uh, an investment idea, and uh, we did. We put together a business plan, we put together the, the outline of the story. Uh, the process is, um, is takes some time. It usually takes a few months to really build that out. Uh, then you go out and you test it. And you test it on all the people that you can find that will listen to you. Don't get caught up in having a 50-page business plan that's got it, that's, um, but, but to have more of a synopsis of what you need, build your slideshow, build your roadshow, uh, but you don't need the perfect business plan to get funding. That was my experience. So, so if we meet with an entrepreneur and, you know, we talk about what experiments they've done and so forth, and, uh, you know, th they're very open and honest about where they are and, you know, we say, well, you really need to do this, and they don't react defensively to that, don't try to spin, um, you know, where they are and over-promote that, uh, you know, that's a situation that will we'll follow over time, and if it comes together, you know, properly, uh, we may well invest. But if somebody is really trying to, you know, promote what they've done to us and, and uh, you know, you, 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 and this would be uh, universal, universally applicable, uh, you, you may conclude this is somebody I don't want to back. I, I want somebody that I can rely on what they're telling me and, uh, you know, if, you know, we're saying something that they should res respond to uh, with a, I don't know the answer to that, or I think you may be right, I should look into that. that. That's the sort of response you want to be hearing. Entrepreneurial types, we get so wedded to our idea that a lot of times we think uh, this is a no-brainer. Well, it isn't always a no-brainer. Uh, and when you, you're standing in front of somebody that's, you're asking $5 million from them or a $1 million from them, 
um, you will find out real quick whether whether it's a good idea or not to them. Uh, for every dollar, every, for every uh, VC in my syndicate of five that invested, uh, three or four did not. So you have to you have to be resilient. You have to persevere through a lot of uh, a lot of tough meetings where they say no, but uh, keep at it. And we did, and we found uh, we found five. VCs that really like this idea and want to develop it and want to try to make some money from it. A good VC should be a, a, a partner with the entrepreneur in trying to build value in the company. And, and that's why the, the personal relationships, are, I, I, I mean, at a professional level, are, are so important that, that those dynamics are, are uh, correct. Um, VCs can add value uh, in a number of different areas. Uh, you know, one would be corporate strategy, another would be helping re to recruit key management people, another would be, you know, and this one's pretty obvious, but helping with financing strategy and contacts in, in raising money. And another one might be in corporate development, work, you know, working with potential corporate partners. Uh, again, through rela relationships the VC might already have established. You're probably gonna have to work really hard at that. Uh, but there's a tremendous amount of uh, satisfaction in having someone buy off on your idea, buy off on your concept, buy off on your invention, and then, and then uh, you get funding from that. The uh, capital markets the, and the high, even the high-risk capital markets have really opened up, and there's a lot more liquidity there than there used to be. So, so I've been on both sides of that, and, um, and I find these, these times a lot more enjoyable than, than the times when, it, uh, when the capital markets just had, were not open to, to risky ventures like us. So to recap what we've heard from Clorogen and Rivervest, there are seven major points to remember from both sides of the venture capital table. First of all, make sure the idea you're selling is unique and not easily replicated, and, it, and it, you can own it or you can protect it. All of the intellectual property elements needed to take it to market. Secondly, during the presentation process, focus on a simple idea well told. A well-reasoned and researched concise business plan is better than a long one without any substance. Thirdly, be honest and realistic. Our guests suggest it's better to tell your story to potential investors, warts and all. They don't expect perfection, but a realistic view that your vision and tenacity can guide you through the inev inevitable bumps in the road. Fourthly, Patience isn't just a virtue, it's a necessity. Raising capital takes longer than you ever thought it should. And funding your business is more important to you than to them. So understand it takes time and patience. Plan your expectations accordingly. Fifth, think beyond the initial funding. The biggest mistakes many businesses make is focusing solely on the first round of financing. You've got to set realistic milestones and metrics that extend beyond the development stage and consider the capital required for manufacturing and for sales and marketing and even infrastructure. Sixth, talk to those who've been down this road before. Learn from the wisdom of others. And seventh, interview the investor as much as they're interviewing you. They'll usually become a working ally and you have to make sure that you trust and respect each other you can post a question for our experts at www.businessintheeyeofthestorm.com. And when you're online, request a free subscription to Business in the Eye of the Storm magazine. That's the monthly publication that goes into greater depth into the topics posed on Business in the Eye of the Storm TV program.